The National Rugby League came out with an interesting announcement the other day. It had to do with the six again offenses that teams have been committing in recent matches. The data seemed to agree with the NRL's doubts, and the frustrated organization is finally putting its foot down. Watch on for all the details, plus other news. First up, the six again rule and how it's being misused by teams. This notorious rule was introduced at the height of the pandemic's restrictions in an attempt to speed up rugby games. According to the rule, teams could receive a six again for ruck infringements instead of a penalty. This forced rugby teams to look for other ways to prevent their opponents from scoring on their own line. In turn, the players' ability to cope with fatigue from the repeated sets, as well as the defensive lines, were massively impacted. Then, the same year, the NRL made yet another extension to the rule, which made it even more vulnerable to exploitation by teams. The extension meant it included offsides as well. The rule was supposed to increase broadcasters' interest in rugby games when the global economy was going downhill. The NRL thought it was making a useful addition to the rulebook, but little did it know that the teams would jump at the slightest chance of preventing their opponents from scoring. The six again rule has been horribly misused in the past year and a half to its existence. What was worse was the organization's failure to penalize the teams exploiting it in the tackle count. But the league has had enough now. It will allow no more exploitation of a rule that it devised with good intentions. So what does it have in mind to make the situation better? Next, NRL warns teams who exploit the six again rule. Clubs have been warned that they could be looking at the sin bin if they continue breaching the six again rule. The head of football has said it's become a tactical weapon, but it will be no more. The warning states that the NRL will be harsher with the teams who are constantly exploiting the rule and preventing other teams from scoring. Head of football Graham Annesley said, We don't want referees imposing themselves on games, and if clubs don't want it, they have to play by the rules. The new rules that have been introduced were to make the game more exciting and attractive to watch. They're not intended to be used as a tactical weapon. A full penalty can be awarded if the referee believes it falls into the category of professional foul, which will also see players go to the sin bin. The NRL is being assertive, and for all the right reasons. The data revealed by internal experts showed how more than 60% of six again calls happened on the first or second tackle. So, will the warning work? We already saw changes to the six game rule being made ahead of the current season. NRL decided it will go back to awarding penalties to teams that make ruck infringements or offsides during their own halves. However, the newest rule was kept for teams once they crossed the halfway mark. However, that didn't exactly work. So, how is the organization hoping this verbal warning would be of any use? Well, for one thing, the warning is backed by some serious penalties that the NRL's referees won't hesitate to use against teams. It was clear in Annalsey's words. He said that if teams don't want these men imposing themselves on them through some tough penalties, they better behave. And last, it seems that the NRL is serious about this horrendous exploitation of its own rule, and it's high time that it does too. The rule breaches were giving the whole game a bad name. What the teams were doing wasn't lost on the fans, and they complained about it frequently on social media media sites, specifically targeting the NRL's official pages. They missed the time when rugby was still a fair game, and they saw their team succeed through skill and talent. Several reports also targeted the organization for turning a blind eye to all the ruckus happening. We hope that the warning would be enough to make the teams behave better, and if not, we hope that the NRL has something else in mind, like making the rule void altogether. Either way, the results remain to be seen. Now, in other NRL news, the streaker who was mistreated by NRL security, a woman named Javon Johansson was supporting Titans when she absolutely could not control herself and decided to jump the fence. Unfortunately for her, the security guards present on match day didn't treat her any differently than they would, say, a male fan. She was polaxed by the security guard. Following the brutal incident, fans have reached out to her for comments about her treatment, and she doesn't have any complaints. The fans announced that she pretty much got what she deserved for breaking rules the way that she did, but other fans disagree. Even the Parramatta playmaker Mitchell Moses was shocked over how badly the security guard hit her. The fans said that the guard shouldn't have hit her as hard as he did. He pretty much tackled her and took her down. The Titans said in a statement following the match that they're doing everything to look into the situation and get a better understanding of it. It's possible that the guard will end up losing his job. However, that's not something that the pitch invader herself wants. She told Tammy Barker and Bodge for Breakfast how she knew what she was getting herself into when she decided to step outside of the fence and run onto the field. She said it was a heat-of-the-moment decision to do that, and it's been a dream of hers to do it someday. Fortunately for her, her friends egged her on just enough that day to make her actually do it. Johansson also said that she's aware of the rules in rugby, since she's played it herself alongside her three brothers. So the security guard losing his job over something he was simply supposed to do would be unfair. We should hear Johansson's opinion on the six-game rule. And another fan incident from the season. At a recent Tigers game, another fan decided to show bravery and carry a flare into the field, distracting the other spectators and the players alike. In a completely odd sequence of events, the play was delayed a few minutes when these enthusiastic fans came really close to the players 
draped completely in red and carrying a bright light distress signal. The tiger suffered a loss to Cronulla that day, and the guy was just too frustrated with how things were turning out for his favorite team. After he was successfully removed from the field, three other fans managed to cross the fence because of the confusion the flare caused. Both Cronulla and Tigers have expressed confusion over the events of the day. How could a fan come into the field with a flare in their hand with the level of security that the NRL has in place during its matches? The captain for Cronulla, Dale Finucane, said that he expects those who work behind the scenes to be the most disappointed over the situation. He also seemed frustrated at the delays that the fans' interruption caused the game, and how the win could have been even more satisfying had he not tried to lift the Tiger spirits personally. Both teams have requested a review of the events, but for the time being, the fan has been taught a serious lesson, because he received a three-month prison sentence soon after the incident. Let's see if the NRL would go a step further and ban him from attending future games, to set an example for all other fans who try to show courage where it isn't needed. And Ian Roberts on NRL's handling of a homophobic incident. Ian Roberts is the NRL's first openly gay player, and when he was hit with a homophobic comment recently, what disappointed him more was his team's and the NRL's handling of the situation. It took the organization a week to condemn the homophobic slur used against Kyle Felt. Marcelo Montoya, who was the perpetrator this time, was only given a contrary conduct penalty after a week had passed and Roberts had raised his objections. He said that the organization had a duty to act swiftly so similar incidents could be avoided. Along with the NRL, he also called the Cowboys and the Warriors for not speaking on the matter that involved a team member. Fans came out in Roberts' support, saying that he's right in reacting the way that he is. He wasn't the one who was targeted, but since the issue is very close to him, his reaction is completely justified. The NRL has been targeted once again for a lack of action where it belongs. Let's see if it'll issue a statement of its own, but for now, the fans and Robert are pretty disappointed with the organization. Well, that's it for today's video. Do you think Robert's reaction is understandable, or was the NRL's response to the homophobic incident enough? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel where we post similar videos quite frequently. We'll see you in the next one.